Hi Gemini, this is Morgan with Compass Rose Astrology and today we're going to be going through your February tarot and astrology chat. We are going to take a look at some of the transits that might be affecting you this month and then also do a tarot card reading with an oracle pull at the end and see how it kind of ties in, see how which transits are going to be activated most um, and might be presenting themselves most in your life. Um, so yeah, let's just chat. I think, um, <laughs> first and foremost, you know, Gemini, uh, you still have Mars in your first house. I think that's a huge transit that we still need to be paying attention to, uh, especially because angular houses are usually more important and more symbolic in someone's life. So we can definitely talk about that, see if we have any Mars, even if we have some like Aries or um, Scorpio kind of cards popping up for you. Um, speaking of angular houses, we also have in your 10th house, we have Venus and Neptune coming together in Pisces and in a conjunction on the same exact day that the Sun and Saturn are coming into a conjunction. In just a couple days before, we do have Mercury and Pluto coming into a conjunction in your 8th house. So we do have a ton of activity happening here. Venus will be moving eventually into your 11th house this, this month, um, which is going to be like beautiful. I think you're going to have a lot of really good luck and um, abundance happening in your 11th house. But first and foremost, with this conjunction between these two planets, respectively in the 10th house and the 9th house, there's a lot happening here. <laughs> so with Venus and Neptune coming into uh, an aspect together in the 10th house, those this is typically the kind of symbolism and a projection of really sweet devotion here. So it, you could be coming into your own in a job. It could be that you're really finding a sweet spot for how you shine bright, brightest in your life. And um, people are really noticing and picking up on that a lot. And however, this is also happening the same day as the Sun and Saturn comes together. And those are two planets that are really indicative when they come together of like this kind of austere legacy, um, really stoic, um, stoic devotion, I would, I would want to say. It's really like looking for the long term here. Um, so maybe you're kind of blending some spirituality and career here. Um, it could be leading your choices a lot. And yeah, so let's just see what that, what that is indicates for you. Um, and just as a kind of aside, I really think that uh, Venus and Neptune, when those two energies come together, whether you believe in this kind of concept or not, like soulmates or twin flames, I honestly am not really a fan of the twin flame concept personally. Um, but when you have those two dualities in that whole twin flame idea is that you have like a good side and kind of a bad side. And this is very indicative of the good side. It's really sweet, really compassionate, really deep connection, a sense of divine romantic connection. Um, and I, I, I'm not saying this has to be about a romantic um, person in your life or your significant other. It definitely could be, but you know, it's going to show up differently for every sign. And your seventh house isn't like super activated in this. So I don't think it's going to be super romantic, like with a person, but I really do think that you're going to have some sort of a really divine connection here. And it's going to be more focused on your true beliefs and your, your ideals. So anyway, let's, let's just see how, what comes up for you, what house is more activated, what planets are more activated. In the meantime, I will cleanse the space with this candle that I made myself for this, for cleansing energies along with this sage bundle. So thank you so much, Spirit. I appreciate all messages that come in to help guide Gemini in the most clear, uh, purposeful way forward. Thank you for all messages and all guidance. Excellent. All right, Gemini, let's just jump on in. Kind of excited to see what we got going for you. Messages. Hmm. Okay. 
that was quick, <laughs> but is, is anything not quick with Gemini? So, um, this is fascinating. Okay, so we have Page of Cups, so I really think you're going to be getting some sort of a message in, um, and actually, oops, sorry, um, Taurus got Page of Cups, so maybe you have someone that's, um, within your life that has Taurus placements, or this could be like kind of coming from your Taurus area. You could be having a dream, some sort of message that's coming through to you. Um, I want to say intuitively that could be um, reaching out to you, but it also could be an actual person that has some Taurus placements um, and it could be whatever message this is, wherever this is coming from, is more of like a surprise. Um, and really telling you to trust your intuition on this, um, especially with Taurus being activated in your 12th house. So, and the 12th house is all about intuition. It's about your dreams. It's about um, kind of uh, those really intimate ideas that you have that you don't really talk to people about. So this could be something that's kind of coming to you at like a spark, something igniting, something that is um, really relates to kind of creativity for you. And I really do think that this is actually causing a bit of a um, dual pathway for you. And you're wondering exactly what you should be, how you should be moving forward with this and exactly um, what actions to take. I don't think it's about, and I don't know what decision to make. It's more of a, so what do I do with this now? Um, if that makes sense. And because you're being given this opportunity that might be coming completely out of the blue, or this idea might be coming to you completely out of the blue, and you're like, okay, well, what now? Like, I like this idea. Geminis are um, very mutable, you know, they, they love to move forward with things and they tend to be um, very gung-ho. So this might be you, Page of Swords, not having much of a plan, but having this idea and you're like, okay, now what? And then you just keep moving forward. Um, and I really do think that this card, along with the Seven of Cups, is telling you um, that it's, that don't be um, swayed by disillusionment because the seven of cups often it's shown as or it's talked about as being a choice but i really do think in this instance it you might be kind of attracted to something that isn't really as it seems so whatever this idea that pops into your mind it might be trying to steer you away from something because you've been going kind of in the not the wrong direction but you've been going towards something that really isn't going to provide what you were hoping um especially okay so we have the page of cups we have this nice cup here that's it's like okay this is this is the offer that you want this is the full of the um potential and the love and the support whatever it is because it could be really emotional here for you it could be um really tied to your heartstrings something that you desire and you're like, oh, but I thought I was going in the right direction here. But um, I think this spark, this idea is going to be telling you, no, you need to look a little bit closer because if you go forward without a plan, you're not really looking at the whole thing um, in, in its entirety. And there's kind of this caution here that you need to take take a, a second look here because we do have this a lot of this happening in your 10th house. Ooh. Look at that. Um, and that's really indicative of kind of career. So if this is something at work, just be careful about making some decisions that people might be um, wanting you to make. Um, it might not coercing, you know, but like trying to make you go in a certain direction and you're like cool with it, but it there's just something you need to take a look at for your own benefit because it might not be um, as gold and glittery as the, as it seems to be. Um, and I think once you do that, this is awesome. This is amazing. So once you do that and you kind of heed that that spark of that thought in your mind, 
here you are coming out as the Queen of Swords. She knows what she's about. She doesn't need anybody to guide her. She, you know, this is a feminine energy, but this doesn't have to be, um, you know, a female person. This could be male or, um, you know, what, whoever. Um, it just has, it's more about like feminine qualities. So, but it's, it's a beautiful card because it really indicates um, the sense of kind of being in her own, understanding her mind, not being swayed by other people, and um, being protected. I think you have this, this spark of wisdom about you, Gemini, that is allowing you to um, really hone in on, on your own thoughts and wants. And it allows you to also put up these boundaries between what other people want and what you want. Um, so perhaps before you were allowing some sort of relationships with other people around you to define your path forward or your cho choices in a career, but you're getting that page of cups spark, that creative intuition, that maybe even a message from someone else that really speaks to something that is a really, um, sweet kind of comforting um, choice for you. And it, and it really speaks to your heart and it speaks to your soul. And, um, with that, when you finally kind of allow yourself to take a step back and take a look at what, what you have coming in front of you, we have the world card and the eight of wands. This is so much success and so much, um, stability in your decisions. I love this because this is just like everything comes full circle. Like you made the right decisions that was right for you. And the world is showing you that um, making these smart kind of intelligent choices on your part will lead you in the best direction. And um, especially so the world uh, I think it's really important to look at here because this is your first major arcana and it's right in the center. So I really feel like maybe you yourself have been trying to look for a point in which that you can feel like something, like there's it's time. Like um, this is something that I experience a lot too. It's like, oh, is this the right time to move on to something else? Is it the right time to go travel somewhere. Um, this could be, um, but, and it has to be like a gut feeling, right? And this is telling you that you will have that gut feeling. You'll have that sense of, um, understanding and knowing. And this also can be indicative of like kind of looking back and understanding the choices that you have made in the past and how they've affected you up until this point and being able to take that and kind of run with it. Um, let's see. So, let's get all these extra cards when I come out for you. Oh, this is, this is great. All right, let's see. Yeah. Oh, oh gosh. Wow. You have a lot of cards. Deck wants to, wants to talk to you a lot, Gemini. Okay. So, this is, this is interesting. I love this for you, Gemini. Oh my gosh, this is so great. <laughs> oh, I love this. Okay, so I totally think that this is really, um, this really indicates your 10th and 12th house. There's just something that is calling to you and you're not sure. You're like, do I, do I, do I do this? Do I really do this? It could be that there's a project you want to work on um, or a, a leap you want to make at work. Maybe, like maybe you want to go for a promotion or go for something that's really completely out of your your kind of playing field. Um, and you have this choice to make. Like do you take what, and, and I know this is the lover's card, but like at the very basics of this card is the choice. Like do you follow what you're being told to do, what's comfortable, what you know, you know, <laughs> do you do what you know is, is just like what everyone wants you to do, what, what should be done, or do you take the path less traveled? Do you do the thing that makes you a little bit uncomfortable, but will provide some sort of growth? 
Um, there's also this warning, like be careful of, um, especially with this Seven of Cups, you know, be careful that you don't allow yourself to get trapped in something that isn't really what it presents itself to be. So it could be that um, this safe choice isn't actually as safe as it is, um, is what I'm getting here. Just because that's how the cards came out, honestly. Um, and then we, you have your choice. You have your, um, this, whatever decision you make, there is abundance that is coming towards you and there is success and stability. Um, especially with coming into this Ace of Pentacles. You have the power to bring that stability in for you. You have the ability to succeed. And so don't think that this is completely out of your power. Um, because with the Temperance card, um, at the very basics of this card, what you put out, you get back, you know? Like, the Temperance card is kind of a bit like the, a little judgment, you know, it's kind of like a judgmental card. I love that you have two, um, two major arcana down here at the end because it's really, the universe is helping you out here. But it's also telling you that what you put out, you get back. So even if something doesn't feel totally comfortable at first, if you put in a lot of hard work and put in a lot of effort, like you can succeed. And once you get a good action forward, this is you. You're coming out as the king of pentacles uh, or king of wheels in this deck. So, and like, can you get any better <laughs> here? Like, this is, this is what you're hoping for, Gemini, I'm sure. Um, there's just this sense of adventure and excitement and knowing, and, um, this is what you're, what you're going towards. You're going to be the King of Pentacles, who is, um, complete in his own skills. He knows his abilities. He knows his playing field. He knows what he's bringing in and what he's put out, and he knows his value and worth. And so do you, Gemini. So really, really... Lean into that because this is amazing and really don't be afraid to follow your heart when it comes to something that really like speaks to your to your desire and also with this three of wands make sure you have a plan like make sure it really speaks to your your beliefs because like maybe maybe this current title that you have is just doesn't isn't fulfilling spiritually, but there's like another promotion or, or another like job that you can take within a company that's like telling you this will actually allow you to help people or really allow you to hone in on your um, creative side or a new job. Maybe if you want to be an entrepreneur, you can follow this path towards success because it really allows you the freedom that you've been looking for. So let's see if we can get an Oracle card for Gemini. Let's see, do we have an oracle card? Okay, We've got a lot of cards, so we'll just take the one at the bottom. And I love it, okay. So we have wisdom in play. Our intuition, intuition knows more than we do. And that's really speaking to this 12th house activation with the Taurus. So really tap into your intuition. Um, because it's going to lead you in the right direction and allow you to make the path that you that you desire. So let me just read from the guidebook here. We have playtime is where we express what we subconsciously know and learn with increased ease and depth. When we playfully engage with life, it magnifies our openness and ability to be present in the moment. A state of playfulness is when the mind relaxes its control and censorship over the expression of our spirit self's wisdom. In states of play, we can freely explore ourselves and our ideas without the fear or the burden of real-life consequences. Activities of emotional relief and reprieve can be enjoyed, and in such carefree moments, solutions to our problems um, often occur to us. This is because play and creativity take place in the hypothetical space of make-believe, visualization, and imaginative problem-solving. An inner subconscious knowing can be accessed and expressed through intuitive action and reaction. 
The maiden is blindfolded with her head facing upward. She pours her spirit self's energy from one cup directly into the other with no spillage. Oh my gosh, if that's not the temperance card, right? Um, she appears to be relaxed and in a state of play as her intuitive pouring is achieved with exceptional precision. This demonstrates the potential of one's inner knowing and guidance to wield results that are superior to those of logic and reason. Now it is time to prioritize play. It is through playfulness that you open yourself to receive solutions to problems. At every age, play is the gift to get to yourself that keeps giving. So that's wonderful, Gemini. Oh, I love it. So it's like, it's like, um, it, in my opinion, to be able to tap into these thoughts and these intuitions that come through your 12th house is, oh my gosh, all these cups, just like the page of cups, right? So you're, you're really allowing your perception to be colored by your intuition. And I think you can achieve that by letting go of some of the stressors and maybe allowing yourself to see past some of these false opportunities that you've been thinking about, you know? So this is awesome, Gemini. I love it. Okay, great. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this reading. Um, let me know if any of these astrological transits kind of resonate with you or if anything has happened to you that you want to share that might kind of relate to some of the astrology or the tarot. And I look forward to talking to you in the next video. Bye.